What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? The crew is back. First time 2021. And this is a new show we are calling the Knights of the Round Table. Um, and this one, this is a specific episode that we're going to do. So Knights of the Round Table is going to be when we get uh, – at least most of the nights in work crew. Logan could not make it because he's got a ton of homework. He just got off work. He's got to cook dinner, and he's got to practice some Iron Maiden music. So the guy's a busy guy. <laughs> but I do. we do have a video uh, coming out. or It's already out. He, he did a return. He was on NOH Factor Fiction. Uh, go check that out. Came out last Friday, so check that out. Um, but as of this recording, it comes out tomorrow. So you guys haven't seen it yet either. But Knights of the Round right, Table. Uh I saw it. I was there. Oh, you, you didn't know. Sammy was there. Sammy was like, everything's fake. It's all fake. Fake, <laughs> fake news. Fake news. Um, Knights of the Round Table, episode one. Um, this specific episode was requested by actually uh, a scare actor over at Knott's. <laughs> Ironically, right? Um, and that is uh, his, if you want to go follow him on his uh, account, it is bs.joker, boardwalkstreets.joker. Uh, um, and it was requested. Hey, by quit him. joking, bro. Quit, quit joking. Quit joking with the Joker, man. <laughs> um, so this episode we're going to talk about. So, uh, for starters, I want to kind of piggyback off what TLEV said in one of their videos, why they haven't done an HHN speculation for 2021 yet. Uh, and that's just for the sole purposes. We don't know where this year is going to go yet. Um, we are kind of just biting our lips, crashing our fingers right now that, that there is a haunt season, but it, it's still undetermined. It's very early in the year. Uh, we are still we are in February um, as of this recording, and so we're still undetermined as to what's going to happen. But I thought it'd be fun that we can revisit the HH, uh, HN Nightmare speculated map. Uh, the guy who happens to always get a majority of the mazes right. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. He's allergic to missing. He's allergic to missing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to give also another quick shout out the entire crew tonight. Either when it becomes sound, lights, or whatever, they did this on their own. They 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 made themselves sound good. They made themselves lit good. Rob's is just on a whole new level of stuff. So it's like <laughs> I can't even compete with that. Um, but uh, thank you guys. That 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 was so nice. I didn't ask them to do that. They just took it upon themselves to like, hey, let's try something new. And I think it sounds and looks really cool. So I'm excited. Um, all right, let's talk about the speculated mazes that came in this uh, map. And back in August of 2020, or no, yeah, August of 2020, it was about. Um, so he released two maps, one for Hollywood, one for Orlando. We are going to be talking about the Hollywood one because we're, we don't live in Orlando. Uh, we have people on the East Coast that do that. Uh, go check them out, Booze Bros. Um, so let's let's talk about the first two that actually kind of got confirmed, ironically, thanks to Orlando. So I guess we are going to talk a little bit about Orlando. Uh, Beetlejuice and Universal Monsters, the Brides. Uh Obviously, Sammy, you could see he is wearing a Beetlejuice hat that was generously given to us by a fan who lives out in Florida. Um, so shout out to her for doing that. That was really cool of her. Yeah, um, big shout out to my mortal enemy. She knows who she <laughs> is. She knows. Who, big, big shout out. Shout out. <laughs> um, but Beetlejuice was confirmed. They did open that for a weekend. And from the talks of why they opened it for one weekend was due to the fact that the, in order to keep the rights to that to use for next season, they had to run it for a weekend. Uh, I, I don't think they wanted to, but that was in order to, to bring it back next year. That was the only way they can keep it. Don't know how much that's true. I'm going off the allegedly. Word. Allegedly, yeah. Uh, uh, so, allegedly. So I, I'm just gonna go off the word of of the fan base. Uh, so yeah. Uh, they also had Universal Monsters: The Brides that was confirmed this year at at least Orlando, and we are assuming we were gonna get something similar, or you know, it'd be Murdy's take on it. Um, Universal Monsters has been at the event now. Would have been the third year. Uh, of course, the first year, Universal Monsters had Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, the Wolfman, the Invisible Man, uh, the Phantom. Am I missing any? I think you got all of them. I think I got all of them. I the think mummy. So. The yeah. mummy. I missed the mummy. No. There was a mummy. Right the there. mummy. Um, and then, of course, the second year, we had Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, uh, another great maze, both music by Slash. I think the only difference with the two mazes on each coast would have been the music by Slash, because Slash seems to love Hollywood. 
<laughs> uh, and Will loves Slash, so that all works for everyone. I do. I do. This is not a lie. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about the rest of the the speculated. Oh, another confirmed one uh, was actually confirmed by Universal themselves when it closed down back in 2019. Was The Walking Dead would be making a return for Horror Nights uh, exclusively. So that was confirmed by Universal Studios themselves. And Rob is doing his best zombie impression. I love it. I think it's interesting to note kind of that they just dropped that right when they closed the Walking Dead attraction and then just radio silence. Yeah. Like, obviously, they were a little iffy about, like, uh, even announcing mazes in the first place, hence why we got none last year. Right. But I think it's interesting. There was, like, no, like, pomp and circumstance, no fanfare about it. They are just like, yeah, and here it's going to be here this year. <laughs> well, not this year, but... Right. Um, no, I agree. Yeah, they kind of just it dropped close it to me. and left us in the dark after that. It was like, okay, are we getting? Yeah, there? I, I, I think I think you forgot to mention one thing here. Uh, I mean, it normally goes without saying, but you know, I, I do want to say it. They were promising more zombies than ever. More zombies right. than ever. So, you know, right than ever. You know, and you know what that more ever. zombies was in 2019? A hmm. photo op with the zombie itself. Hey, not, not zombie Chris. You know what? But a zombie. Hey. They kept their hey, that's, more, that's a lot of zombies. That's a lot of zombies. That's <laughs> more than ever. That's one more than they usually have. <laughs> Bro, I missed out. I, I wanted a photo with the zombie. Yeah, I know, dude. And, and like Sammy said, not to get confused, not zombie Chris, because we all want a photo with zombie Chris. But Yes, who doesn't? Yeah, right? yeah. Everyone, wants, everyone wants a photo with zombie Chris. Legend. Legend, dude. Freaking Wait for it. Legend. Dairy. Dairy. Um, let's talk about the speculated ones now. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, that looked like maybe likely it was coming. Uh, Sammy doing his best Leatherface impersonation. Love it. Um, <laughs> Leatherface may have make, been making a return, especially in the mummy queue. It looked like the house was being built, um, which looked like the facade to the house. Um, but it never got finished, uh, and so we never got any confirmation whether or not that was going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, however, it would have been more than likely coming, in my opinion, because I know they are currently working on a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that's supposed to take place timeline-wise, I think, straight from the original. They're going to bust a Halloween 2018 and just go straight from the original. So that is more than likely probably would have came, but not 100% uh, confirmed on that one. Do you think uh, it would have still been spinning in a circle? Like in the movie? Like when the movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, movie, like the movie began right as it is spinning in a circle. <laughs> and it just picks up from there. He's just, that's all he's been doing since 1974. And just freaking doing that. Um, movie <laughs> opens with him like putting his hands on his knees going... <gasps> <sighs> his, freaking, his family's just bringing him water out as he's doing it every freaking so often. Like like Heat it's a mar- like it's a marathon, just handing him water. Marathon. Speaking of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, shameless plug. Me and Rob just did Leatherface versus Art the Clown. You know, yeah. so uh, yeah, shameless plug. Go watch that video. Horror yeah, Clown mashup. It's, it's a good one. It's a good one. It was a fun one. Yeah. Um. So what do you guys? What are your thoughts on the potential of Texas Chainsaw Massacre coming to the event in twenty? Well, what was supposed to be twenty twenty one? Now twenty twenty or twenty twenty? Now it's supposed to be twenty twenty one. Um, I think I think it makes a whole lot of sense, especially with what you were saying about uh, the Texas Chainsaw movie. Uh, I actually haven't heard about that. So is it potentially coming out? Or that has actually been confirmed by the studio who's making it. The, the only thing we've gotten so far is a poster. Gotcha. Okay. So is it Blumhouse? Out? Sadly, no. Nah. Uh, well, sometime coming out, that would make sense to do promo. Hornets is pretty famous for that. But also... I think, um, was that not the spot where uh, Haunting of Hill House was supposed to be, too? I believe... Or am I wrong about I'm that? not 100... Com- okay, so I know Hill House... We'll, and we'll, we'll talk about Hill House, too. That I know Sammy has probably a lot to say about Hill House, because that's one of his favorite shows. Um, I, I believe that Hill House was going to go where Stranger Things was, in the gotcha. soundstage. The soundstage. So, I, and, but I'm not 100% confirmed on that, either. So, I don't know where that was supposed to go and if that was coming to the event uh but gotcha. that would have been my guess it looks like a lot of the netflix properties have gone into that soundstage right um but texas chainsaw i mean they got all like the props for it they pull it out every like two or so years yeah and uh, i think it only makes sense you know i mean it's just it's, it's easy and it's they're always bangers so it's a fan favorite <laughs> you know you that can much. never go wrong yeah well really uh, can't. sammy what are your thoughts on uh texas chainsaw 
Well, was that the one that was in the Water World, Water World queue? Gosh, that was it was. What was that? Twenty. That was nineteen. Was it 16? sixteen? Was that the last? No, it was. And then it was twenty eighteen, right? Yeah, I because it was like it was within the past couple of years that it was back over there. Yeah, it Titans was in the Water World queue. Titans of Terror. Titans of Terror. There you go. Was that twenty seventeen? Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I, th- I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre is always scary. Um, especially because I really feel like it fits like the uh, the boo hole scares that you can normally get with uh, um, from well you can expect from Horror Nights, you know, Leatherface coming out with room, you know, I mean that's gonna scare people. It's a loud noise. Um, and like you said, it's it's a pretty easy build, especially in terms of they've done it before, whether it be Titans of Terror or its own standalone house, so they can pull props from that. Um, they can pull costuming from that. It's not like a lot of rework to it. Now, obviously, you don't want the same maze, but you can obviously borrow ideas, expand on ideas, work on the feedback you got from fans previously. Right. So I really feel like there's an opportunity. Um, and so that's always a good thing. And I, and I think as he's, it's a staple. You know, he's, he's, he's a, he is a titan of tear. He is a staple. He's going to get you an hour and a half queue no matter what. So um, why not? So well, you can focus energy to... You know, better properties, Hill House. Right. <laughs> uh, Rob, what are your thoughts for Texas Chainsaw? That's um, one of your favorites. Know, yeah, you know, I, I do. I do. It, you know what I really enjoy is when you first walk in, to me, that smell you get, you know, I feel like some people say it's rotting flesh. I've never smelled human rotting flesh before. <laughs> to me, it, it smells like beef jerky, and that makes me hungry. Well, hold and... on. I, I would hope you would not smell rotting flesh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so my wife is disgusted with the smell, but I thoroughly enjoy it because it just reminds me of chomping on some beef jerky, which I typically usually put in one of my pockets for the nightly stroll throughout the night. That's a little midnight snack. <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. midnight snack. Yeah, but... <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Rob. I've smelled burning flesh before in my life. Uh, that's a story for another time. I don't, yeah, um, don't want to know why, but Samuel. okay. <laughs> um, but I'll let you know if it smells like beef jerky or if it actually smells like rotting flesh. Oh Does it smell of rotting, burning flesh? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, let me let me know next time, Sammy. I need to know what that smells like. Um, but uh, yes, it, I feel like um, Texas Chainsaw is is a staple kind of of um, you know HHN it. It, uh, kind of echoing what you guys say, you know, it, it's, it's an easy, it's an easy build it, it, you know, they, they've done it before. Um, you know, they can twist the maze a certain way or this way or that way. The only thing um, I'm going to say, I guess, negative about it for me personally is that um, it, you know, I guess, the, you know, they were trying to do it along with, cause the new movie was supposed to come out and, you know, you have the maze to go with it. The thing that I'm not a big fan of as far as like mazes coming out with movies is I w- always prefer the movie to come out first, you know, maybe towards the summertime because I would want to see something new. And if, you know, if they're making a whole new movie, you know, kind of revamping the story, I would like to see that in a maze because it's still kind of fresh as opposed to, you know, just kind of rehashing the same thing. But um as far as like like you were saying, uh, Sammy, you know this the scares are there. You get loud chainsaws. You get you know you know your uncle jumping from behind the counter and yelling at you. So th- those are always good for good uh, jump scares. And you know I'm I'm gonna walk through it. And like you said, it, it does. Uh, you do get a crowd. Um, you know with with this te- Texas chainsaw because it is a a popular property. Right. Um, all right, on to the next maze that was uh, speculated. Uh, Sammy, I know you're going to be taking over this one a lot. The Haunting of Hill House. Uh, obviously, the maze was uh, speculated for 2020 due to the fact that in 2020, that same month of October, uh, The Haunting of Bly Manor came out. So, obviously, we could have seen it as a promotional tool to push out Bly Manor and for, you know, how they usually do, of course, go wa- experience the nightmares in real life and then go watch season two of The Haunting of uh oh it was blind matter this season on netflix uh whatever date and while you're waiting in line they could have played the trailer they could have showed clips from the first film uh, first season um so haunting of hill house potentially coming back what do we think about that um because obviously you know it, it would have made sense back in october obviously with the you know the haunting of blind manor but how do we feel about it coming back to 
Horror Nights in 2021. You think it's outdated? Do you think it's you, – you, would it still work? How do, how do we feel? Sammy, take it on this one. No, I'll start this one. Um, I I will say, and you guys are probably going to think this is out of left field for me. I think it is too late to capitalize on it uh, because all of the buzz was from its first season, right? Um, and not not as much. I mean, as much as Blind Manor was a good story, it's, at the end of the day, it wasn't really as scary. I think, right? Or lent itself to being as scary as season one. Um, and so I feel like if they were going to do it, they would have to do Blind Manor now. Right. And I just felt like after watching that, I was disappointed with the scares of it. Like, it didn't leave me as scared as the first one. Like, definitely, like, when I watched Hill House, I was on the edge of my seat for most of it. Like, I was, you know, like, you know, I can think of key moments in there. The last episode when they're in the car, I can think about just being in the morgue um, when they're operating on the body, bent when the lights lady. go out in the morgue, bent neck lady in the house. Yeah. Um, and there's just so much like more, I think iconic things, like as much as like, I, like if they did it, like count me in line, no matter the wait time. Uh, like if they redid, if they did season one, but I feel like Netflix now is going to ask them, okay, well, if you're going to do, We'll, still, we'll give you Hill House, but you also have to do stuff from Blind Manor, and I would just be quite, I think, like, not saying I don't trust Murdy, but I also don't trust Murdy, because he has left us disappointed <laughs> like, with his uh, Murdy, other attempts. But since... <laughs> I walked through Stranger Things too, and was very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I because as you guys know, prior to... Um, Stranger Things 2 coming. I was like, yo, we going in. <laughs> and then I left that maze and going. After, after he went through, he's like, yo, we staying out. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going back. <laughs> um, yo, we'll go hit Killer Clowns again. Don't worry. Don't worry about <laughs> no, the hour and a half. No, you know what? We'll go again. We'll go again. You know what? You want me to go all the way to the back lot for <laughs> Ghostbusters? We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. We're here a show that. calling my name. I know right we now? just got out of. I, I know we just got out of a House of a Thousand Corpses, and we got to trek all the way back. Don't worry about it. Don't worry as about long it. as we're not it's going through Stranger Things it's only again. A Fifteen minute wait. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about. Uh, Don't worry. So I mean, that's 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 my fears with it. But like, if you if if he brings if he if they said okay, you know what, you can do Hill House. And that's all you got to do. And he delivers. I'll probably cry. I'll probably right. cry. I mean, let's just be honest. <laughs> Will, what are your thoughts on Hill House? Think of it coming back no, or what? I have pretty similar thoughts to Sam. So I saw season one. I haven't seen uh, Bly Manor yet. Um, I need to set aside a time. I'm, I'm so behind on TV. No, I, I anyways, haven't watched it either yet, so you're not behind. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I just, yeah, you know it really missed the mark there because a it's not going to be really promoting anything it's right. not what netflix needs out there right now and bly manor just didn't have the splash that hill house did cuz i remember like at least on like twitter and whatnot the day after hill house came out i was like holy shit i got to watch this everybody's talking about it and right. it, it was like that for weeks you know you couldn't get away from it and it made them a lot of money and then bly manor rolled around i've heard it's a really great uh season i wouldn't know but uh it just it didn't have the the hit that they wanted to so from a business perspective it doesn't really make sense and then i think that that point about stranger things 2 is smart where it's like um it, if they're if they're gonna force uh something for blind manor which they almost yeah. certainly will they'd be stupid not to you know because it's you know you've got to get that promo in for both seasons right uh, it might it might have a you know it might force uh some creative decisions that wouldn't have been made otherwise so i think it's kind of missed its mark and it's not likely to come back although i will say um after last two years of stranger things uh universal and netflix's relationship is definitely still strong there's no doubt about that because it just made them both so much money yeah um so i think uh, i think we'd definitely be seeing some 
Netflix property, maybe not this year, but maybe when they roll, if there's something new, something like flashy that hit that hits like the horror section at Netflix. Well, yeah. It's funny you bring that up because I, I know they haven't really, ne- they really never touched on the animated side of things at Horror Nights, but they're they're releasing a Resident Evil animated series on Netflix uh, sometime this year because this year's Resident Evil's 25th anniversary. So they're doing like a bunch of things this year. Um, so it'd be cool to see like that, you know, cause I, I'm, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, uh, and I would love to see, um, something of Resident Evil, whether it's the movies, the games, um, the, sh- the animated show, anything I'd rather, I'd love to see it. Did it had, have I done a maze treatment on that already? I think I got uh, enough. you might have, I don't know. I think I got an but idea. But I, I will tell you this. I will tell you this. I I did I did read, and I think it was either today or the day that before. The live action movie uh, got the yesterday. release date. No, not that. Um, that Netflix is trying to explore more horror movies, um, so I think that relationship is going to stay strong between Universal and Netflix. You know, to promote Projects, their their yeah. attempts to get into horror business. Right. Um, um, so, I, I think I think we can see that uh, maybe for the next five years. Rob, uh, thoughts on Haunted Hill House potentially coming back? So here's the thing, guys. Um, One thing, I'm going to touch with the Resident Evil thing. Um, You have Walking Dead. I'm I'm assuming they're probably going to bring the Walking Dead. Two kind of zombie things. I don't know if, you know, I mean, it could work, couldn't work. I feel like they would just kind of, it's like the same thing. Right. Um, But I would rather see a Resident Evil kind of maze. Um, That would be awesome. But here's, here's the thing. Uh, kind of something Will Will was saying, uh, you know, Netflix and, and Universal, the relationship with Stranger Things, you know, is is kind of solid. So, I would say this: I would say they possibly. I feel like bringing um, a Haunting of Hill House back and announcing it early, like you know, as early as they can. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen. Whereas, you know, best best case scenario. Um, you know, and and kind of bringing back some of that foot traffic to Netflix to be like, hey, because that's what I do when I find out and they, you know mazes are going to be announced. I'm like, I gotta watch that movie or I gotta watch that TV show. Um, to go back to Netflix and be like, oh well, you know, I gotta watch, um, Haunting a Hill House because it's gonna be at HHN and I, I gotta refresh my memory. And in that, being like, okay, well, I already watched season one. I gotta watch season two. So. I feel like it, it it could work, even though you I get I get what you guys are saying that you know it's kind of you know it's kind of past its time maybe right. you know it would have been better this past year but I, I don't know I, I feel like it could it could make uh it could come and it would definitely been you know I feel like it would bring some foot traffic to Netflix to watch um you know Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor and I didn't see the whole season of Bly Manor I watched probably maybe like four or five episodes and it just it didn't stick with me um, I wasn't a big fan of it but uh, season one i watched it like i think like two or three times i i love season one right uh, i know and that's why we'll talk well, about, uh, we'll get to this a little bit later but i i, I added actually haunting of hill house of potentially returning uh, we're going to talk about the returning mazes uh what would be returning um sammy did you want to well, i got one more i got one more com yeah well and i think the other thing too though that that kind of made um Stranger Things work for Universal was if they could put their whole event around it because it was such a popular property, right. meaning that it was everywhere. Obviously, it was on all of the merch. They had concession stands for it. They had snacks for it. You know what I mean? Um, and so, like, they got to really capitalize on all avenues and all, like, fronts on that, where I feel like something like Hill House doesn't offer that. There's not, right. like... Uh, because, like, I think where, like, I felt like Stranger Things 2 missed them, or like Stranger Things coming back missed the mark, was that like, it, because it was kind of split between 2 and 3, um, like, I was really happy to see 3, because like the Starcourt Mall, um, there was some really, I think it was more, it had more scary elements to it, and it had more like op- opportunities to lend itself to a strong maze, but because they combined them together, that was like, I think their biggest failure, because you didn't get enough of either. Right. And you just got the weak points of both, I feel. Uh, and I and just going back to the merchandising thing, like I just don't think you can sell Bly Matter merchandise or Hill House merchandise. Uh, and so that's where I kind of feel like that's why they might not. That's another reason why they might not might not bring it back. It just doesn't have that front. 
That's an interesting point, actually, about the uh, those properties that kind of like, you know, Stranger Things was very much about like world building along with just the story itself. So you had the opportunity mm-hmm. to create like, you know, merchandise regarding different very flashy things. And then you had the 2018, what did you have the, um, the like burger place, or, like the diner kind of. Uh, from that dude who gets shot in the first season. Oh, yeah, that was the... Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then 2019, you had the Starcourt Mall there. And then on top of that, you got the the good 80s imagery and stuff like that. So I, I think that it's a good point that Hill House, it doesn't, it doesn't have that... Um, it's a different kind of story. Yeah. Yeah, to touch on that a little bit too, they also, if... Uh, and I know Will remembers and Rob may remember. I actually know we all remember. Um, they had 80s nights as well. On Thursdays. On so, Thursdays. Obviously, with Stranger Things being heavily set in the 80s, I mean, that really wrapped around not only the marketing of both HHN and, and Stranger Things, but uh, it fit the theming well uh, with the 80s music, the 80s vibes. They even had a, a tribute band come out and play a bunch of 80s music. Uh, Beetlejuice, you know, I, even though that's, a, I think, a 90s, early 90s film. Uh, you know, he came. Uh, that's out. like '88. Is it '88? '88. I think. 88? I think so. Yeah. Like I mean, that. yeah. That. I mean, him being an '80s, you know, movie as well. So it all it all fit around the theming of that. So yeah, um, definitely. So the next one, the speculated, uh, obviously, uh, fantastic film. And I was curious to see if it were to come, how they were going to pull this off. Uh, Blumhouse's Invisible Man. Um, now, don't know where this was going to be. Um, a lot of people speculated it to be. Uh, originally in the mummy queue. Um, and I'm not going to say the water world queue because I had something else that I, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all saw by now, uh, that was, uh, rumored to be something else that I've been wanting to come to the event for some time. But, uh, the invisible man Blumhouse, uh, if it were to come, how likely do you think that property would come back? Um, we know that HHN's relationship with Blumhouse is strong being Blumhouse is a universal company. Um, so how, what do you think? It, would it be, would it come back or would it be in the back burner in case they couldn't get something? I think, uh, I think that's definitely going to be one of those back burner properties. Uh, Invisible Man for, uh, for when, for how it was released. Uh, wasn't it one of those first, um, movies to start the, like, you know, the premium but early video on demand. The theater at home, right yeah, when, it was that and The Hunt. Right. So it kind of started that thing. And from what I heard, I don't know, I haven't looked at any stats or anything like that. But from what I heard, it performed pretty well for what they were expecting. You know, right. this whole new model probably opened it up to more people. Um, and it did really well. Everybody, the consensus was generally really good. You know, I really loved the movie. I think it had a high, like, critics score and general stuff like that but it kind of runs into the same issue where it just it's not it's not a big name brand property and i don't think anybody from the general public right now is gonna go like oh do you remember that invisible man movie that came out earlier in 2020 like they're not going to instantly go to elizabeth moss uh you know invisible man 2020 this is just my opinion but Oh, yeah. Uh, I, but... I, no, I, to add on that a little bit, too, yeah, it's because I don't think unless you're a diehard horror fan or HHN fan, yeah, you're not going to – like the general people that – majority people that usually go to that event are just kind of people that are from the public that just want to go get scared. Uh, so they're not going to really just be like, oh, Invisible Man, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and it it did kind of have a little bit of buzz uh, at the beginning of 2020. Maybe not because of the correct circumstances that, you know, for HHN, right. given that it was, you know, it was kind of one of those groundbreaking movies with the VOD thing. Um, but yeah, I, I do see it. Uh, I didn't actually consider that being one of those back burner movies and potentially like in the next Horrors of Blumhouse compilation or something like that. Right. I don't know. That's an interesting idea. Right. Who's touching oh, for on Rob. You want Rob? Oh, okay. Um, so I, I also agree with Will. I believe this would be, you know, a back burner maze. But I think this this would be one of those um, sleeper kind of mazes if they did it right. Because for me, I really did enjoy this movie. Um, I seen it in theaters. And I just, for me, 
I guess it's just, I, I don't know. I know you guys are probably the same way. When you watch a horror movie or any kind, any sh- horror show or anything, you start to imagine like, oh, what would this be like at HHN? And I think it would be very difficult to do just as far as because of his costume design in the movie. Right. But there for me, like they're, you know, like the attic scene, just, you know, being in the house, there's so, you know, and then, and actually uh, his house where, where her, I can't remember if it's her boyfriend or her husband, but where he lives, like these were all things where I was just like, this would make a great like room. This would make a great facade. You know, this would be really cool. So I think it, this for, like you're saying, it's not one of your like, oh, known things, but um, at the same time, you know, who no one really knew like Happy Death Day and, un, you know, was it Unfriended, you know, the dark web or whatever it was, right. you know, those were just kind of like, I feel like um, not throwaway mazes, but I feel like those were more promotion mazes. So um, I think it, if it's done right, you know, I think it, it, the Invisible Man could be a good maze. But, you know, like, like Will said, it's probably one of those back burner mazes. Sammy, uh, what's your thoughts on this to wrap up the Invisible Man? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, I think it just depends what they do. Is it Horns of Blumhouse 3? Or is it uh, Blumhouse Invisible Man? Because like, I feel like if you look at it, uh, in terms of like being a standalone base, I don't know that it has the power to to fit a for a four-minute walkthrough, four or five-minute walkthrough. Um, I mean, like, it does have really cool scenes. Like, I would love to see how they pull off the killing scene when they're in the restaurant. Because I really feel like they could use a lot of the a lot of the techniques they used in Ghostbusters. Right. So, like, kind of have, like, the floating heads and stuff like that. Um, and so I feel like that would be really cool uh, to see how that works out. Um, the other thing, and the, but the other thing, and I think we'll kind of touch on this, but didn't expand on it, is, like, it's forgettability. Because if I see, if I'm walking through the park not knowing what's going on, and I see, oh, Invisible Man... I'm like, which Invisible Man? Are we talking the first Invisible Man? Or are we talking one of the other million yeah. recreations of it right. uh, leading up to the 2021? So I think that's where it's kind of like, okay, like which one are we talking about? Uh, but I feel like, I mean, I feel like they can do it justice, uh, but I feel like they may want to combine it with something else to really, yeah. you know, with it, maybe two other properties from Blumhouse to... And it, you, like you're saying, it could be... Promotion. be it could be a little confusing too, because you know, they're probably going to have universal monsters, something. And then you also throw like, Oh, invisible man over here. So like, you know, it could be like, well, but not that in- one, yeah. a different yeah. one, <laughs> yeah. not, not that the invisible man. One, the, you know, the one that's really fucking good. Uh, the 2021, which is still really good, but it, it's, it's but got different to do with universal monsters, but different. <laughs> um, no, no yeah. glowy robe this time. No glowy robe. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it's a potential. I think it honestly, I think it'd be a back burner if Murdy couldn't get his hands on something. That's something he could just pull out of the bag. It's like, okay, well, we're gonna do this then. Um, the last one, uh, and you know, I've been seeing, hearing a lot of things about this last one um, that it's not coming back, that it's done. Uh, Orlando looking like they were selling a lot of props and stuff they were gonna use in this maze, um, and this artist wants to move on from this image and, and start a whole new image now, and that's Billie Eilish what was heavily rumored to be coming to the event in 2020. Uh, obviously, like I said, with the pictures and, and the, 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 you know, the forums saying, you know, they're selling a lot of the stuff. Billie Eilish was going to do this maze, and this was going to end her, like, kind of horror phase of, of what she does for music, and she's trying to do a whole new image. She doesn't want to be recognized for the horror anymore. Um, what, do you, what are you thinking the chances of Billie Eilish returning? You think they're just going to scrap this one completely and, and use whatever they had in that to – to maybe enhance a maze that could use it, or or do you think that Billy Eilish will return? I think if it were, that, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, if I don't, I don't think it were were to return. I think, like you're saying, you know, it's kind of been in the news. It's kind of made its rounds as far as um, she's trying to lose that image of that horror, you know, imagery that she has. So I don't, I don't think it would, you know, it, it would come. I think I think having a maze uh, would only serve to like cement herself in place. Uh, you know, like having a, having a relationship with uh, Universal, specifically you know Halloween Horror Nights. Right. Um, and I think it would just kind of be counterproductive, especially if they're planning on making a complete pivot. Right. I think it would just make it a lot less of a clean transition, and I don't think it would be a very good PR move. Um, it's interesting though because. Uh, 
that was one of um, the last mazes we think that got demolished, right? right? It was the, we think, again, none all of this speculation. is speculation. Yeah. speculation. We're going off what we saw from freaking drone footage, from rumors. Exactly. So is, we're just kind of None of the pictures were even from point. Universal. <laughs> yeah, we're just, we're yeah. all, we're all just speculating at this point. I was, none of I this. was peeking through a fence looking. Was, yeah, Rob exactly. was peeking through fences. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's interesting that that was one of, cause it looked like they had cut down on the number of mazes they were going to put in, right. you know, cause they put two tents in the, uh, in the like creep show spot. They didn't have any in the, uh, Frankenstein meets Wolfman spot, stuff like that. So I think it was interesting that that of all mazes was one that they kept right. for 2019. I don't know if that means anything, probably doesn't, but I don't know. Sammy, Billie Eilish. That's a good go for me, dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Randy Jackson. <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> yeah, that's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not coming back. You're right. It's my, which saddens me because I really wanted it to be the shock of the year. I just really right. wanted it to be a complete. Just everyone who was like. What do you mean, Billie Eilish? She's not good enough for this event. We need to have Iron Maiden. We need to have Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Misfits, Miss. <laughs> misfits, right there, buddy. Every we need a Metallica, Miss. On my wall somewhere. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not quoting anyone. I'm just, just throwing just off the dome, bro. Off the dome. <laughs> Iron Any Maiden likeness of a character presented is completely coincidental. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, man, Sammy. I mean, I, I agree with you, though, Sammy, because, you know, I, 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 I always say this. Like, I respect her as an artist. She fucking won five Grammys her debut year. That's, like, unheard of. And she's been fucking killing the game. And everyone this day and age who are into that music love her music, you know? Um it's you know it's in viral things like TikTok. It's it's on commercials, you know, movies. Uh, her music is blown up. Uh, so I, I give credit where credit is due. She is a phenomenal person, an artist for for going out and accomplishing that at a very young age. Um, I think it was just me as just I didn't see her music translated into a maze. Like I, I know she only has like two horror theme songs from what I know of. But, like, I know her image was kind of really horror-like in her album cover for her first album, like, her possessed on a bed. Like, yeah, that's pretty scary. Uh, I just didn't know how they were going to approach this maze if they were going to do it. Um, but I was hoping that if I went through it and it, it was going to be something that shocked me and, and just changed my opinion completely. And I would have been as real as possible on the camera and be like, yeah, I was the one that said this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. But this was actually one of my top five favorite mazes. You know what I mean? So... I actually have uh, one uh, more thing to add to that. So, uh, personally, I was really excited for uh, Billie Eilish Mays to come to the event. I think she's phenomenally talented, right? And you cannot undermine like her impact on oh yeah popular culture and music, like yeah. in the slightest. I mean, as you said, she won five, five Grammys. Grammys her debut year. Yeah, but I feel like that's also. Um, what might put John Murdy in like his, you know, in his zone. Right. I think he really thrives off of taking like, uh, like concepts and just like going fucking crazy with them. Yeah. And you like, we've seen like, uh, with, uh, Alice Cooper and black Sabbath. And if you want to bring a more recent, not a music maze, but Pandora's box and holidays in hell, all of his original properties Clowns. are just, insanely twisted and sick and so cool yeah that and especially with the maybe not like immediately obvious musical choice i think that could have been fucking wild yeah so i'm a little disappointed but don't think it's coming back i, I would have loved to have seen what a, what yeah. it could have been honestly yeah i, I especially because i was hearing it was like gonna be the nightmares of billy eilish right like based upon like things that have like reoccurring dreams and things like that which has been terrifying or if she just did it all about her pet tarantula i was in for it because i know she has a pet tarantula because i don't like spiders that would be so badass <laughs> I'd go through and I know, and like, great i'm glad you guys enjoyed it because as long as you're with me we're never going through that shit again <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, pet tarantula, and then um, you should see me in a crown. That'll make you very happy. Telling you to watch that music video because she's got tarantulas all over her. I'm good. They probably would have pulled the uh, uh, creep show feather trick. Uh, yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. I, you know what? You I was lucky enough life. to avoid that every time I walked through that maze because I don't like roaches and I didn't want that on my face. So I was lucky <laughs> enough to avoid it. Scary as fuck. Yeah, I know. Like, like, I, I, like, <laughs> and I, I would push people. I would hurry up and run towards that part just so I can avoid that. And I missed it every time, thankfully. Now the guy who did that is watching this. He's like, I'm going to fucking look out for you next time. I'm going like, to get him next time. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to returning potentially uh, whenever they decide to do the event, hopefully 2021. Um, what I wrote down, uh, three that we can probably guarantee a return um, uh, if it was confirmed in the first place. That, well, two of them already – Oh, actually, the first three have all been confirmed. Uh, Beetlejuice will probably be making a return. That's a fan favorite. A lot of people wanted that. A lot of people were actually – Really pissed off that Orlando opened it because a lot of people wanted to go through it. Uh, Universal Monsters. Now, we could be getting the Brides uh, because we in Hollywood never got Murdy's adaptation of the Brides, of course, with which we're assuming music by Slash. I would have loved to see what Slash would have came up with with this. Um, or just another Universal Monsters in general. That's a, a very popular property at the event. It's always a, a long line. So that's uh, probably going to be re making a return. Uh, the Walking Dead. Uh, obviously, they already said that that would be coming back for Horror Nights. Uh, the one I added here, uh, which was a very big surprise when a lot of when we talked about it, I, and I think it, it may be making a return because Rob did touch on a good point of people going back to watch this. I think Haunting the Hill House will be making a return if it was uh, originally going to come in the first place. I think it will be making a return with Haunting of Hill House because that I think is just too big of a property to pass up whether you do the first season or the second season it doesn't matter people are going to go through that maze it's a different experience watching it on TV compared to actually living it in real life um, I think it would get a ton of good scares especially if they do do uh, Hill House there's a lot of content from that alone they can do a lot of great uh, facades inside the maze that you can see the house alone the amazing architecture architects architectural I don't know the word um, designs architectural ins <laughs> inside the house. Um, so I, I feel like Haunting a Hill House, out of all these properties, has a chance of returning. Um, for a little bonus, I'm gonna say Texas Chainsaw 2. If that movie is slated to come out this year, it would be a great marketing point for that movie. Um, but uh, let's move on to rumors. Now, I have one rumor I want to bring up that was actually brought up into light about two, three weeks ago uh, the Waterworld Q. A lot of people were confused as to what that was going to be. You know, no one could figure out, crack the code. Um, one person on Twitter, and I forget the name, uh, actually came out and gave his theories and thoughts as to what it can be. And if you looked at the images real closely, it actually came through. I am super stoked for this. The minute I texted Logan, I knew he was going to be stoked for it, and he was. Uh, the rumor for the Waterworld queue was going to be Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Um, a property that I have wanted to see at Horror Nights for a very long time, which I think would make a great maze. Um, I guess you can see a little silver shamrock logo in the facade. Uh, and in one of the rooms from the, the drone view, you can, I guess, see one of the rooms that looks really similar to the factory of uh, silver shamrock. Um, so whether or not that is true, if Halloween 3 was going to come to the event, I beg to you, Murdy, please Bring that back because I would love to see that. I know everyone in this round table would love to see that. Halloween 3 is so underrated. I think a lot of people would just mistake it because it's not doesn't have Michael Myers. But if you look, if you look at it as just Season of the Witch, it is a fucking phenomenal film. And I, I along with Logan and maybe some of you guys in here, I will defend that movie till the fucking day I die. So um, if that was true, that would have been cool. Um so, guys, now that I told you the, the potential rumor, what do you guys think? Would you guys like to see a Halloween 3 season of The Witch? You know, I haven't heard this uh, uh, this rumor yet, and oh my god, I would fucking kill for this maze to come to the event. That is, you know, he, John Murdy's been, you know, he made a point to drop in Halloween three uh, things in every single Halloween maze he's done so far. And uh, Halloween three is one of my favorites uh, in the whole franchise. Right. Grant, I love almost all the movies, but 
uh, Halloween three in particular, it's just it's just got a it's just got a feeling to it. That's kind of like un it it doesn't it's so different than everything else, um, and it's just like it's it's one of the most fall movies I think that's ever been created. Right. Um, and there's a lot to work with there, and um. I, please, please, John, please, please. If it was planned, if it was going to come, please keep that. I want please. to do that. This is uh, this is this is this is what I'm gonna say. Um, will you kind of just took the words out of my mouth as far as it just reminds me of fall and and as weird as this might may sound, um, it reminds me of. Like, for whatever reason, The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Like, I don't know why. Just, like, when I watch these two movies, I'm like, I don't know why. I feel like they're, like, connected or something. I have no idea. Like, they're not at all. Yeah. (laughs) They feel like after-school special Halloween movies. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and, um, I think – I mean, I don't know. I think it would be cool just because it it would shine a light on a movie that's very underrated – and it would almost not, I wouldn't say it's like an original maze or anything like that, but I feel like it would give us a flavor that we have not seen when it comes to the Halloween franchise. And, and in that case, I would say it would be like something new and fresh. So I, I, I hope, I hope it does come for one for me. Cause I, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Halloween fan and I do <laughs> enjoy the movie, but for two, for you, Anthony, because I know I know just been talking to you the years that you have backed this movie and have praised this movie. I would like it to come to fruition and f- to come to HHN. I would like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to throw out Logan's name too. Cause I don't think you guys know he, I think he's a bigger fan of that movie than I am. Oh, wow. I did not know and, that. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, if you guys go back and watch the Halloween collection breakdown, I think that was part of like the top three, Halloween films and his, and his and that are his favorite. Um, he loves the or top four. I don't remember, but he loves that movie a lot. Um, and when I told him about it, he lost his shit. So, um, <laughs> Sammy, uh, have you seen Halloween three for one? Uh, for one, the first question. I'm gonna say that's a no. All right, next question. <laughs> I'm about to slap you through the screen. <laughs> like, All right, next what do you mean I haven't um, seen Halloween three? Done, guys. I'm done. I think you're. I think you're in the wrong place being on this podcast right now and not watching. Wait, Halloween I thought you were the one that said you haven't watched a bunch of movies. Um. Anyway, um, but, what are your thoughts of if it were to come to the event? Uh, would you? Would you think it'd be a good marketing move on them? Well, yeah, I think it's it, it's the right year. I feel like to do it. Right. If you're going to do it. You have to do it a year you're releasing a regular Halloween movie. And with Halloween Kills coming, um, it just feels right. It feels good. It, it makes me happy. Mind you, because... Michael Myers is not in this film. Oh, I know he's not. That's the best part about Except it. Except the cameo the when, they, when they show him on the TV. <laughs> yes, and that's it. Like, that's all you need is give him the cameo in the um He'll get the final in, scare. In the, 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 yeah, that's make him the closing scare. Oh yeah, yeah. Goals. Make it. We'll oh. give him the TV. Yeah, give him the TV. Play his trailer in the queue, and give him the final scare. That's it. Because you have to sell the movie. Or if um, if we want to bring Invisible Man, Halloween Kills is going to be my Blumhouse. As much as I want a standalone 2018 Halloween movie. Um, or Halloween 2018 May is. I can uh, I can already see that final scare confusing a lot of fucking people going through an invisible man <laughs> maze, and then the last like, year Michael Myers. Like, what the hell? <laughs> oh no! Answer this question. Yeah. Make up. Just answer over. Damn it! Is this doing this again? Really? Everyone's question for for a tw- um, Halloween kills. How did I'm the damn um what basement? What happened? What happened? I'm here. How did you get out of the damn basement? That's I what I wanted to know. I do not know. <laughs> Answer uh, with the final scare. He found the fire sprinklers. They did. The house <laughs> still on fire. Like... <laughs> found the fire sprinklers in the basement. <laughs> or if you just found water. Yeah. Um, I gonna... feel like she planned so much. I mean, this is, I know we're getting off. I know I'm getting really off topic here. If she went to plan for 40 years on this man coming back to haunt her and her family, and she went through every step to put him in there and kill him 
and then he found a way out. Like that's her fault. <laughs> yeah, that is her fault because yeah. she had forty years to plan for it, yeah. and she apparently had this impeccable plan. <laughs> and right. he's still I'm gonna count to forty years. Start running. <laughs> Start running. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So to end this video, I I wanted to obviously we know. Uh, in my count, there's a total of five properties that we would believe would be coming back. I'm going to recap those. Beetlejuice, Universal Monsters, Walking Dead, Hill House, and Leatherface, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Which leaves me to believe that I would need three fillers uh, for the event. So I came up with three properties I feel would be awesome at the event. Um, whether you guys agree with them or not, I, I would like to hear your thoughts. Um, as of recent... Uh, because I've been wanting to watch it, and I never got to go to the theaters to watch it, and I was pissed that I couldn't do that. Uh, I feel the movie by Blumhouse, Freaky, would work as a maze. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Have you got, for, first of all, has any anyone but me here seen that film yet? I have not seen it yet. No. Will hasn't seen it. Know. Sammy, did you get a chance to watch it yet? No, I, I've been I've been pretty busy. Okay, recently, um, so I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Well, obviously, I mean, and and I'm not going into spoils. This is based off the trailer. You guys know it's a horror version of fucking Freaky Friday. Um, best way to describe it. But I think Vince Vaughn's character, uh, before he swaps bodies, is just a terrifying character in the very beginning. Uh, the kills and gore in this film are beautiful. I think it would make for some great scenes in the maze. And just to see the body swaps between the two people, uh, you know, and then them playing, like, the killer role. And then, you know, you have a grown-ass man playing, like, a, a teenage girl. I think would be not only hilarious in a maze, but it would just be <laughs> freaky. <laughs> like in the title. Boom. Pun freaky. Game. Pun not intended. Um, so I think Freaky would be a good maze to be kind of like, obviously, you know, them coming back, they would have to save money. And that would be, again, another back burner maze that they can just bring up, be like, okay, we can't do this, but, you know, we have the rights to this, so let's just work with what we got to make it to this. Um, so I think Freaky would work. Um, I feel that's almost the perfect candidate to include in a um, Horrors of Blumhouse movie. Right. Uh, because I think it would I think it would do the same as, like, would be the desired effect for Invisible Man, where it's right. like, oh, shit, that, that movie's at Horror Nights. Or like, oh, I saw that movie at Horror Nights. I'm going right. to go back and see it. Whereas if you're going to have an upcoming movie, you're going to want to put that uh, front and center to try and, like, boost it as much as right. possible. But for bygone movies, it's kind of like um, – uh unfriended and truth or dare like those had come out months prior right yeah it was i don't know why they chose those two fucking movies but <laughs> i think i think murdy i was reading it on twitter i think murdy said that um that blumhouse gave him like a list and of like movies that they would allow him to do like uh in tandem with like whatever other blumhouse movie they were doing that year because right. they needed like promo for these and so the ones that people were like clamoring for they couldn't get like, uh, I think Get Out was one of them and stuff like that. Um, so I think it was just a, t uh, like a studio kind of business move, not exactly a Murdy move. Murdy, no, Mike Aiello at the Midsummer Scream panel talked about why Get Out just wouldn't work as a maze. Um, and I completely agree with him. Uh, it's a psychological film that, it, yeah, it's horror, but I just, it's a great, and he said too, it's a great film. He goes, I personally love it. He goes, I just don't think it's it's HHN material. Um, I feel like if you were to do a Horrors of Blumhouse type maze, maybe with, uh, let's say, Invisible Man, Freaky, and Get Out. I think if you do a couple scenes from Get Out, maybe like two or three rooms, it can work. But a whole maze, I don't think so. Um, Us, however, worked because that film from start to finish had scenes that can terrify people. And I know Sammy loved that maze. Um, <laughs> Sammy, was that your number one from last year? Yeah, easy. Easy. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, another uh, thing I was thinking about, because we did see the first season, and we know uh, Greg Nicotero and John Murdy are good friends, uh, being that season two is supposed to be slated to come out this year, uh, Creepshow. I can see Creepshow returning in the future for a good promotional uh, thing, and they can also take some stuff from the, the Creepshow 2 film and mash it like how they did with the first Creepshow maze and mash some you know new stuff as well. So Creepshow Season 2 uh, could potentially uh, be uh, another kind of filler maze that if they couldn't get another maze back, that could be something they can get. Um, and then I had an idea. There was an idea to bring together a group <laughs> of remarkable icons. And I was calling that the Terratram Universal Icons. Um, Ooh. 
that that was my idea for the return of the Terror Tram. Now, when I really thought about the Terror Tram, I was like, okay, do I want to see another Hollywood Harry? I mean, I'm not a f- I, I, I am a fan of Hollywood Harry. I, I should say that I like Hollywood Harry. The two years that they've done it, I think it's been freaking awesome. The whole story behind it. Uh, ever since I've been going to Universal, uh, the first year I went, uh, it was uh, Scream. Um, and that was a phenomenal terror tram. And then every year after that, it was walking dead. And then it was the purge. And then when Hollywood Harry came, it was something new. It was Eli Ross terror tram, uh, with Hollywood Harry. The whole backstory was dope and stuff. And then they brought back or they, it was the Titans of terror. No, they did Titans of terror the next year. And then they did the final year, which I think was 2017, the return 18. Yeah. Finished in 18 area, 18. Uh, 18 was the final Terra Tram that we got, and then we didn't get one in 2019, but it was Hollywood Harry again. I thought if you're going to bring back the Terra Tram, why not do it with some style? Um, obviously, the Whoville is gone at this point. It, it's a rest in peace to that set piece, but that's all gone. But that means that you can make room to make a little kind of maze thing like how they do in uh, the Metro sets. Um, so you can you can work with that there. I was thinking, as far as Universal icons go, let's dive into not only the Universal monsters, but let's dive into some of like Hitchcock's films. Let's dive into like some of the other horror, uh, you know, d- icons that are just outside of you know the Universal monsters and everything. Like there's other there's other good ones out there that we can dive into, or maybe just do a throwback of the the Terror Tram of just the best so basically- iconic stuff. Basically, House of Horrors, but outside. Yes. Um, obviously, when you hit the Bates Motel and the Bates House, that can all be psycho. We can keep it go. psycho-themed. I think it'd be cool to see, like, Norman Bates just running around and just a bunch of different hotel guests just getting killed and stuff. Um, and then you go up to the house, and maybe it's a little interactive experience there as well, uh, not just a photo op. Um, I, I think the, the whole chainsaw thing in the beginning could be um, – Let's just let's say if it's an original idea, maybe Dr. Frankenstein created more monsters than us, the monsters that we're seeing, you know, just kind of go play with it a little bit. And then when we get to the plane crash scene, let's just go chaotic. Let's just release all the fucking icons. You know, we can have some wolf man. We can have some invisible man. I don't know how they would do it, but let's do it. We can have some mummy. <laughs> you know, what if freaking that plane was carrying a mummy cargo and boom, the mummy, uh, you know, let's just have fun with it. And and I think it'd be a great return for the terror tram now i haven't really thought this through i'd have to go back into detail and and research a lot of horror movies but i think a universal icons maze and it doesn't even have to be from their films it could be just years of hhn let's bring some of the horror icons from orlando over this is how they make their debut in hollywood you know what i mean so it could be a fun thing it could be a great return for the universal uh terror tram um i know that's our exclusive thing over here in hollywood but i don't know what do you guys think personally I love the Terror Tram. Like I, for my first year in 2017, that was one of the first things I did. And it like, for me, it's, it really gives you that like Halloween feel. There's something about being like outside and then like, you know, some of it's like dirt and stuff like that. Or like, and then just being kind of outside in like a forest almost, not really. Those but iconic sets you know what I too. Mean. Yeah, those, what I think uh universal is kind of missing an opportunity to like work with these sets that are you know universally got get it recognizable (laughs) um and so iconic to horror in general i think um you know it's an idea that kind of um uh was fantastic but i think they can do even better honestly right no i'm not entirely sure the reason why they got rid of it in the first place there might have been some logistical thing that might prevent that from ever happening but god one can dream you know uh sammy what do you think about uh the terror tram returning my idea for universal icons um you know i I think it's a good idea uh i think it would be fun i think the only thing that i would want what what i'm keeping in mind is is if if we're going this based on a 2021 Horror Nights, and I know based upon my understanding of the current situation, is John Birdie is not working currently. He's, yeah, he's been laid off that. since since like July or whatever. Um, does, does laid off and furlough so, mean the same thing? 
Or is there a difference? Oh, the, the, the furloughed, technically, yes. Yeah. There's a difference because furloughed, like you're still on the books, whereas laid off, you're not. Okay. So, yeah, he's, he's on the books, but he's not getting basically. paid right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's on furloughed. Um, um, and so he's not working on any new ideas. So my biggest thing is, is like, I, I think you brought, like, I didn't comment on Freaky, but, like, I think that would be really cool for him to be working on that. But in order to put these mazes together, there's a hell of a lot of work that has to go into it. Agreed. So I feel like the, what we're gonna, what we're going to get in uh, 2021, if we have a Horror Nights, would be just those ideas we talked about earlier. Right. Um, because of the need of to write a whole scenic design, to write the whole script, to get all the costumes, the masks, and all that. It's going to take a lot of work. Right. And especially because I don't think they're going to make a, dis- a decision, um, a concrete decision, until probably, till, I mean, probably June. July. Yeah, June, July. Yeah, probably. So I think, like, that's where I'm kind of like, if they are going to do it, we're just getting those five or six mazes that we mentioned. <laughs> um, and I just hope that they do those well and do those justice. Because I would rather have a limited event uh, that they do well. Right. Maybe the wait times are going to suck and things like that. But I would rather them do that than have to think of, okay, how do we bring back the tear tram? How do we do the tear tram well? When that's something they can go, okay, let's get the event back together. Let's deal with this whole damn COVID thing um, so that we can get it. um, Because obviously they're still going to be have to work around that and figure that whole thing out. Um, So I think I'd rather they just focus on the, the what's the needed now yeah. then then try to put on a, a, a what the fans want i think i might I mean, be with, making a uh i'm sorry i mean i might be making a, a mace treatment based around that universal icon idea though so look out for that pretty soon stay tuned i think uh i think you're totally right i think 2021 is not exactly the year for shooting for the stars when right. it comes to you know building these mazes but it's definitely going to be I mean, especially considering when, you know, John Murdy told us he was furloughed, which was July of of this past year, I think it was, he's already put in a, like, basically the whole, almost the whole event's worth of work into all of these properties. And I, and on top of that, they already own uh, and have built part of these mazes. And I think they'd be, uh, they'd be stupid to not use them uh especially because a lot of them were real big winners i mean coming off of a year like 2019 you can't not follow it up with some really you know dramatic properties so um i think that it d- this year is definitely going to be like uh kind of rein it back in and just see what we can gain from this year to get good momentum going into years coming now, this ne- before I let Rob talk, this next thing I'm about to say is probably going to strike a conversation in the comment section. But keep in Ooh, mind. Controversial. Yes. Keep in mind. Uh, I, I've been, I talked to a lot of people about this, uh, and that was even with last year's event. Universal Horror Nights and Universal Studios have two different budgets. Horror Nights gets the budget, obviously, with the money they make every single season that they have the event from ticket sales, merchandise, uh, food, all that stuff. Keep in mind, the potential of seeing new mazes if the event were to come back in 2021 is very low. Um, The fact of the matter is the budget that they used for already making the merchandise, because merchandise was already made. They even sold Mm -hmm. a lot of it in Orlando. They still got to sell that merchandise on top of, you know, buying rights, buying supplies, employing people. You know, to build, to design, to write, all that stuff. Audio, lighting, all that stuff. It, a lot of people already, you know, they built stuff and everything. So the chances of a whole new event to come in 2021 are very, very low. Um, due to the fact that they have, all these, they have all these properties, they've already built most of them, and they still have to go through with these properties. Um, the, for them to fork out extra money to buy new properties... It's not likely to happen unless they already, you know, like a company like Blumhouse that works very close. That's the only way I can see a new property coming to the event. Other than that, I hate to break it to everyone, but don't expect if, if, if the event does come back this year, don't expect a whole new slate of things because I think they're just going to pick up from where they left off. 
Um, I can't say the same from Orlando, even though I've had conversations with people about that. Um, because Orlando, they their whole budgeting system is a lot different than how I, I would believe how it is out here. But just keep that in mind. Just don't be surprised if the speculated lineup from 2020 is the same as 2021. Okay? Uh, I don't want to let you guys' hopes up or down. Um, I hope I'm wrong and they pull money out of somewhere and do a, a whole other event. But <laughs> I'm just saying don't don't expect something <laughs> new to come. Like, they're going to probably use the same stuff they were going to use in last year just because they already have the rights. They've already built a lot of stuff. They probably already started building, co uh, making costumes and masks. They hired a bunch of people. You know, they got all these rights. That costs money alone. Just think about that. Uh, with that being said, Rob, uh, what do you think about but that? I have one oh, on that. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Sammy. Go ahead. But, but, but before we go back to uh, your, uh, your dream scenario over there, I think just my overall general consensus will be if we get a HHN in 2021, it is going to be HHN light West Coast. It's going to be Universal is going to care first 100%. and foremost about about making sure their park is open and opened well, right. then putting on a special event. Right. So I think we're just going to get HHN light 2.0. I think they'll move whatever they had in Waterworld Cube, which we're hoping is Halloween 3, put it in the soundstage, put another maze in the soundstage, and just put in, and then have like two mazes. And have an event there. I would be happy with anywhere to two to four mazes than an entire event at all. Like, I would be happy with a nice, like, daytime. Like, I would not mind at all. If it's all going to be in sound stages, I would not mind that one bit. Like, I would I would genuinely be there fucking every weekend to go through that. I, I think... Yeah, I, think uh, I think they'll... You'll get a walking, like, walking Dead easy, bring that back. Play, well, then you just have to build two mazes in a... And sound stages, and <clears throat> there juice. it is. Wait, but Sammy, yeah, Sammy, 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 I, I think that's going to be a little tricky to um, afford more walkers than ever. I mean, you can, you know, at a certain <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, auto -op, oh. That means, you know, we got to have more walkers Wait, me, than ever, Sammy. You know Wait, what, let though? Run, <laughs> let me run the numbers real quick. <laughs> Let's see, so we have to have more walkers so what is that what does that put us at are we talking about like walkers, zero like, you know what what elderly people use like yeah we throw those out in the front are we looking for the single cane or oh, the whole technically it's like... a walker so it's not breaking a promise yeah it's true that um, is true well what do you want to add on that so i was gonna say you know you know how you were talking mm -hmm. about oh uh we hope that there's a whole refresh lineup yeah honestly I'm totally cool. I am too. I'm gonna go to with you. I agree with you on this I'm, one. I'm fine with this lineup. I really am because you know what? This lineup goes so hard. It does. Like, <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. I would honestly be disappointed if they passed. If they totally shifted it up and dropped Beetlejuice, I would be pissed and if they dropped Beetlejuice. Universal Monster, like the Brides and all that good stuff. Which it, there's. There is no way that these mazes would not be fantastic. Right. Murdy, like we've seen, you know, with Beetlejuice, we saw what he did with Ghostbusters last year. If he can plot something similar to that, or maybe scale back the budget, because, you know, 2021. Dude, are you it. fucking kidding me? Lines out the door. That's an easy dub. Yep. He's, <laughs> he's so talented when it comes to that kind of stuff. It's a no-brainer. If they passed it up, I, I think that's a horrible idea, honestly. All right, and Rob. also, oh, it's ahead. not like we ha we've we seen the mazes right. and we're getting them again. It, yeah, you know? again, we don't know anything that's coming to the event. This is all based off speculation and exactly. what we were thinking what was going to come speculation-wise. So we're just going off what we know from speculation, and that is HN Nightmares map. Rob, uh, I'm sorry. Give your thoughts now. Um, so here's the thing, guys. <clears throat> I think I'm on the opposite end, opposite end of, of the, the fence over here. Um, more like on the fence on the fence um, movie review <laughs> <laughs> um i'm i'm gonna say 15 mazes like no i'm just playing um here's the thing is, is i i agree like i they're gonna use um the stuff that they already have because you know money they didn't make the money from last year that they were counting on so they have to use what they have um but here's the thing and, and like like something like what Anthony was saying, I think the terror tram, um, your idea for it is phenomenal, but I feel like that's something that needs a lot of detail put into it. A lot of time, a lot of love, 
the the respect that it deserves <clears throat> and i think that's something that we would need to wait till we have not i don't even know if next year would be a good year but maybe the year after that when everything's kind of like a steady flow of what we know what's going on but here's the thing though is i'm also a fan of the terror tram um for one because i like you know i like seeing anything you know horror and being able to get out there right um but for two I think it's an excellent um, like crowd control device as far as keeping people away from each other and away from lines and stuff like that. Like I, when they took it away, I was you know sad because it, it wasn't going to be there. But also, I feel like it was going to make the the park more crowded. Now we all, we know that they're going to limit capacity and they're going to have you know everything you know kind of people first as far as safety and everything. But I still feel like. Um, the terror tram is a good, uh, good way of kind of socially distancing people and another form of, I guess, I like I said, crowd control, but this is one thing I thought of that would be awesome for the terror tram because I don't think it would take too much effort. Um, again, but this would, you'd have to get something new is, um, you know, how they show the video before you go in and and you know before they drop you off i would say do something like the hunt out there because you like you can just be like you know on this on the 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 tv hey you know there's these people who you know you know whatever they they're in this you know mansion blah 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 you know this is you know people have been disappearing and blah, blah you know whatever the however story goes and then you have you know these these people just hunting you and you know you could throw anything on them they could wear whatever it doesn't have to be anything elaborate but something like the hunt kind of thing especially it being out in the you know the woods and near uh plane you know near the, yeah the plane crash all that kind of stuff i think it would be really cool something like that because your idea is awesome but like i said it that's something that it we need to be in full swing of things and it needs to be done right because that's that's really murdy needs to just watch this <laughs> And but just, are you taking notes? Yeah, he needs are to take, you taking he, <laughs> he needs to take notes off of what you just said. Timestamp that's gonna be a pop quiz at the end of the episode. Send it to him because you, <laughs> yeah, for real. Know, he's gonna be like, Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> for yeah, for real. Because like I said, your your that idea is awesome. Like I would love to walk through that. So that again, but uh that's just kind of how I feel about it. I think we, we're gonna get um, like Sammy said, uh, like a HHN light, maybe two, three mazes. Um, but I am hoping that they, they do do something with the terror tram. Um, yeah, that's, that's my opinion. All right. Well, you heard it here, guys. These are our thoughts of what a potential HHN 2021 could look like uh, based off speculation map provided by HN Nightmares. Shout out to BS.Joker for suggesting this idea that we do this and revisit the map. What would we thought would be coming? What would be for sure coming back in 2021 and what would leave in 2021 some properties that can potentially replace it and our thoughts overall on the event in a pandemic world um i want to thank everyone here who joined me in the round table tonight uh, i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys did enjoy this new series uh nights of the round table uh leave some comments below what you guys think we should talk about next uh i already have an idea for episode two uh, and I'm thinking we talk about Not Scary Farm, what that could look like in 2021, because the success of their tasting events, they proven to the they've proven to us that they can run a socially distant, safe environmental event. And I want to talk about what a Not Scary Farm could look like if they were to open in 2021. So. Don't know when that will be released, but be on the lookout for that. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification below every time we put up a new video. Sammy, where are we at on social media? Oh, uh, well, that's, that's, that's easy, my friend. Uh, let me, let me come in on this one. Come in real, real big. Well, that will be, um, if you're a fan of the uh, world of Twitter, you're going to want to check us out at Knights of Whore. And that's night spelled like nighttime. And if you're a fan of us on Instagram and you want to see some of our killer content, that will be at the Knights of Whore. Got it. Because Twitter has limits on uh, characters. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> Fun fact, yes. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. Be sure to tune in to the Queen Mary Dark Harbor Slider Takeover, the Mindless Horror Podcast, running for the next four weeks. Episode one is already out. We'll be out tomorrow. I'm sorry. We'll be out tomorrow, so check it out. 
Uh, we, we hope you guys enjoy that, and we will see you guys next time for another episode of Knights of the Roundtable. See you guys soon. Peace. See ya.